Hi, it's Richard. And I'm Alex. Welcome to the Siebel Hub Learning Experience. Get ready for Siebel 22 with the most up-to-date modular training course available. Learn more with clear, precise instructor presentations. Team 2 has a mid-level release they want to push to integration test and then incrementally migrate that content to the test database. Learn better with comprehensive exercises and demonstrations. Now the next step to be executed is the business service and we can click simulate next. This executes the business service and we can inspect the output in the workflow process data panel. Learn faster with high quality course materials. Go to SiebelHub.com and start learning today. Hello and welcome to the Siebel CRM 22.3 update highlights with the Siebel Hub. The latest update for Siebel CRM as of March 2022 comes with several interesting features and enhancements. The inbound REST API gets a new entry point for invoking workflow processes directly. The Siebel loyalty application now supports promotion rule-based rejection of loyalty transactions. The updated Siebel bookshelf guides, most notably the database upgrade guide, contain valuable information about the migration application and the repository upgrade utility. Web Tools catches up with Siebel tools with a new workspace dashboard button. And last but not least, there is a new functionality in the message broadcast area. Let's start with a look at the existing and new inbound REST API resources in Siebel CRM 22.3 and higher. Since its inauguration in IP16, the inbound REST API supports CRUD, create, read, update, delete operations on business object data exposed by specialized base integration objects. Another genuine endpoint is the business service method invocation. In development environments, the Workspace API provides CRUD operations on Workspace Managed Repository object types. The migration application, introduced with IP17, exposes a REST Automation API. And partially documented in the Silent Configuration chapter of the installation guide, the Siebel Cloud Gateway application has a REST API too. The new kit on the block is, of course, the Workflow API, which allows external systems to directly invoke Siebel workflow processes. Let's take a closer look. The Siebel Workflow REST API uses the new Workflow Endpoint. To invoke a workflow process, we must provide the process name and the required input arguments in a POST request. The response will contain the output arguments of the workflow process. Like the other endpoints, we can pass and receive the payload as JSON, which is the default, or XML. Using the Git verb, we can either retrieve a catalog of workflow processes or an open API, aka Swagger file, definition of a single workflow process. Much like the Business Service API, the Workflow API requires that each workflow process be registered with the REST user's responsibility for security reasons. Registrations done in the Administration, Application Screens, Business Process Access View. Only workflow processes of the Service Flow type are supported. The nature of the REST API prohibits using it for interactive or long-running flows. If you cannot yet update or upgrade to 22.3, you can still invoke workflow processes through REST However, this requires creating a custom copy of the Workflow Process Manager business service and invoking it using the Service API. The Siebel Loyalty Guide and Bookshelf contains information about the new action type introduced for loyalty promotion rules. This type, namely Reject Transaction, can be used by loyalty administrators to define loyalty promotion rules that validate incoming loyalty transactions. For example, a transaction can be rejected based on a condition that refers to the amount field. If the amount field is not within the allowed range, 
the transaction will not be processed. With the 21.10 update, Oracle introduced a new way to rename repositories after a full migration. Remember that after running a full migration, two repositories exist in the target database the current Siebel repository and its successor, the new, freshly imported, migrated repository. As of 21.10 and later, the Sieb DevCli command line utility, also referred to as headless Siebel tools, must be used to execute the rename operation. Using the Sieb DevCli utility ensures that other necessary operations are also executed on the target environment. In 21.10 or later, it's no longer supported to rename repositories with direct SQL statements. The Database Upgrade Guide 22.3 informs us of a slightly different syntax for the command line. In the new release and in the future, the switch repository command replaces the switch to migration repository command. Administrators now have to provide three input arguments referring to the names of the current and new repository, as well as the name to use for renaming the current repository. Another documentation enhancement, also in the Database Upgrade Guide, provides us with details on the migration application's cross-version migration capabilities. In a nutshell, Siebel CRM supports migration from DR to RR environments, even if the DR is on a higher version than the RR. For example, the development team might be working on a 21.12 environment while the production is still on 21.4. There is, at the time of this recording, only a single use case where it's quite problematic to have differing DR and RR versions. That is, the DR version is above or equal to 20.7 and the RR is on 20.6 or earlier. Recall that in 20.7, Oracle introduced the new Parallel Workflow Development feature, making workflow processes fully workspace-enabled, much like applets or business components. While the incremental migration is unfazed by this architectural difference, the problem lies with the full migration process. For this use case, full migration from a DR that is on 20.7 or higher to an RR that is on 20.6 or below the Database Upgrade Guide describes how to employ the Full MIG Compatibility Mode System Preference, which must be set correctly to export the workflow processes in the correct format. Siebel Message Broadcast, aka Notifications, has a flag to send messages to all users. When this flag is checked, the message will be visible to all users as expected. The 22.3 update introduces a new user property for the broadcast message business component. This user property, named Exclude All User Messages, will then be set to Y or True. Suppress the display of broadcast messages with the All flag in the notification pane. Finally, Siebel Web Tools continues to gain on the classic Siebel tools in the race for 100% parity. In 22.3, it's but a minor addition of the Undo Submit button to the Workspace Dashboard. Now, developers can invoke the Undo Submit for Delivery operation from both Siebel Tools and Siebel Web Tools. Let's review the mandatory and optional steps for a successful update to Siebel CRM 22.1 or higher. First, it's highly recommended to take a backup of the entire environment and the database that you're intending to update. Then the Modular Deployment Engine MDE, needs to be executed, as has been the case with all releases since the inauguration of the MDE in 21.2. The MDE provides the binary update. There's a wider version gap, you'll also get a topology update to the unified directory structure. This applies to any enterprise server component such as AI, Siebel Server, or Gateway. It's mandatory to run the post-install database update, which can be run automatically as part of the MDE or manually after the MDE is finished copying the binaries. This has to be executed once per database and import schema changes, seed data, and open UI manifest data into the target database. Make sure to verify the report and the log files and rerun in case of errors before you continue.
There are also optional steps which might or might not be applicable to your situation. The repository upgrade utility is optional and it can be run only against a development database. It should be run only if you intend to uptake the so-called non-mandatory changes made by Oracle, such as the recent CrowdTwist integration. The result is an integration workspace that contains the non-mandatory repository artifacts. Developers can then inspect and test the Oracle manufactured objects and subsequently deliver them into the main branch or another integration branch. The release notes contains configuration constructions which you might have to apply in your development environment if necessary. There are known issues reported in the release notes as well, so make sure you understand and apply the workarounds if necessary. And finally, there's a bunch of non-repository administrative changes which you might have to take care of. The complete update process with all required and optional steps in gray and green respectively is depicted on the diagram. Here we can see the update process for development environments where the fast track to a successful update is as follows. Take a backup, run the MDE, run the post-installed database update. If you have no repository upgrades, configuration instructions, or administrative changes to implement, you're done. If you need to execute the non-mandatory repository upgrade or apply configuration instructions, you have to do that in the development environment and test and deliver these changes. If you have any administrative changes on your to-do list, you have to implement them as well before declaring success. The same is true for test or production, also known as RR environments, where the update process is a little shorter. The mandatory steps are the same. Back up your environment, run MDE, run post-install database update. If there's nothing else to do, you're done. Of course, you have to repeat the update process on every Siebel instance. If the DR update included repository changes, you have to use the migration application to deploy the new and updated artifacts from the development environment to the runtime environment. Similar to the DR environment, you might have some administrative changes on your checklist that you need to execute before declaring the update complete. Let's take a look at the path for an upgrade from a version prior to Innovation Pack 17 to the latest and greatest release. If your current Siebel CRM version is below IP17, you find yourself in the lower portion of the diagram. This means that you have to conduct an upgrade project to get to Siebel 22.1 or higher. The duration of a Siebel CRM upgrade project is measured in person months, sometimes person years. The project complexity and duration are tightly coupled to the number of customizations you have applied over the years and also to the age of your Siebel application. In a nutshell, the more time and money was spent on customizing Siebel, the more time and money will have to be spent on the upgrade. If you come from a very old Siebel release, such as Siebel 7.5, you have to execute a two-step upgrade. One-step upgrades are supported from 7.8 up to 8.2. Upgrades from these ancient releases also require a migration from the ActiveX driven high interactivity client to Siebel OpenUI. If you're on a younger version, such as Innovation Pack 13 to 16, you're on the incremental repository merge, IRM track, which is still a lengthy process but much more streamlined. You might not even have to migrate to OpenUI as you're already using it. Upgrade projects are conducted using the latest Siebel CRM update available at the time you start the project. The upgrade path is direct from any version prior to IP17 to 22.1 and higher. If you already ran a successful Siebel upgrade to IP17 or higher, you might be on any version between IP17, Siebel 18, 19, 20, or 21. To get from there to the latest update, you execute the aforementioned update process. The real benefit of the continuous release model is evident here, as the update process will at most take a few person days.